Good morning all, welcome to another weekly vlog. I have woken up with a lovely mosquito bite here. That is not my kneecap, that is the swelling from a mosquito bite. I've also got a couple here on the sides of my legs, which have, you can kind of see are protruding out a little bit here. I knew sitting by that lake yesterday talking to you all was going to have repercussions as soon as I saw a couple of mozzies me and my friends always joke that I'm pretty much allergic to the outdoors and any bug that can bite or irritate, anything that can itch, will itch me and my body tends to go into overdrive. Like that's, I mean, that's nothing. I've had times where my legs are completely covered in lumps and bumps. This is kind of like a sign that hay fever season is coming, I think. Like I felt very itchy the past couple of days. I've been quite snivelly. So it is coming, so I need to make sure that I'm taking hay fever tablets on the regular to kind of keep it under control. Anyway, enough of me talking about my hay fever woes. Um, welcome to another weekly vlog. We've just had the laziest bank holiday. We have not done a single thing today, which has been great. We've sat in the garden for most of the day. Dean's been painting in his studio and I've just been reading my book. So it's been a very, very chilled day. I think I managed to read about 60 pages of my book today, which I'm really pleased with. I feel like I'm really getting stuck into it considering I started it maybe two or three weeks ago. And then we've just had Domino's for tea, which was a very nice treat. An expensive treat as well, might I add. I, f I forgot how expensive Domino's is, especially here in the UK in comparison to other countries. When I've been to Australia, Domino's is really cheap, but over here it's extremely expensive. Anyway, I digress. Um, we are now about to go for a bike ride and we're not going on our usual route. Normally we go on quite a rural bike ride out into some fields and we've decided we're going to go for a bike ride around the city because we, like, I haven't been into the actual city centre that we live in for maybe close to three months now. And it's really bizarre because while self-isolating and being in lockdown, you just have your kind of like points of contact or like your A to B that you go to and you just get used to that and then you, that becomes your world and your little bubble. So for me, it's been when I go for a run, I go down the track that's near our house. I don't know why I'm pointing as if like you know where it is, but there's a track near our house that just leads through like woodlands and fields and stuff. And then the other place I've been is the supermarket. So they've been my two places that I've just been going to, almost like my little triangle, like a little safety net almost. And I've completely forgotten that there is this huge city that we actually live in that surrounds us that is still there. And it's quite bizarre to think that there's just, especially like the very centre of the city where all the shops and the restaurants and everything is, it's just bizarre to think that it's sat there, not really doing anything and yeah it just it does that make sense it's just quite a weird feeling so we thought we'd go for a bike ride I think it's going to be really bizarre especially because I'm so used to seeing the city with traffic and people around there won't be any of that I imagine it'll be absolutely deserted there won't be a soul around but also because I haven't been into the city for so long that will be bizarre in itself as well and I've never seen it deserted either so yeah it's, it'll be an odd experience
strong look this morning isn't it and it's half 10 and I'm still in my pajamas and haven't even been awake for that long I think I got out of bed at maybe like nine o'clock and then I've been rushing around like a mad woman getting some things photographed ready for a flea market sale that I'm participating in with uh, Vestia Collective so the two lovely ladies who run this account, I don't know if you can see that, it's called Make It Last. They blog about style and sustainability. Really, really nice um, blog and a lovely Instagram account. Anyway, they've um, got together with Vestia Collective and have rounded up a great group of people to do a flea market sale this week. I think I think it launches on the 29th of May which is Friday so if you're watching this vlog on the Sunday the flea market will have already been live for two days but I'll link it anyway because there might be some things still left for sale so yes I have had I've been saving a few pieces for this flea market sale that I, that I haven't put on Depop so there's some slightly more premium pieces that I felt would have been better on Vestia Collective so I, I'll show you what I've put on there actually. So on my Vestia Collective there'll be a Bally handbag, there's also a Joseph handbag, these acne sandals which I think I've worn a total of two times maybe. There will also be a pair of boots which ironically I brought on Vestia Collective but they are so they're such a marmite boot and I can't bring myself to wear them outside like I don't quite have the confidence to wear them and that is because they are the um, Margiela tabby boots I love the idea of these boots but when I actually put them on I just I can't bring myself to wear them out I know like you shouldn't really care what people think but I feel like I don't actually feel that confident in them even though I love the look of them and I do quite like how they look when they're on I don't feel good in them and I feel like that in itself is quite a strong indicator of something that you shouldn't really wear like maybe I'd get more comfortable with them in time but I just think do you know what they've been sat in my wardrobe for maybe the best part of this year I think I got them at the beginning of the year so yes they'll be on Vestiaire Collective you know going full circle back where they came from this gorgeous dress from Le 17 Septembre which is a, a really nice Korean brand will also be on there it's such a gorgeous dress the reason I'm selling it is because it's far too long for me and I figured because of the way this dress um, oh, it's really hard to show it when it's flat but it's it would be a bit too difficult for me to get it taken up so I just figured maybe it could go to someone who's slightly taller and then there'll be this um, gorgeous khaki green baum uh, it's like a puffer parka almost and there's also a Hermes scarf knocking around somewhere so yeah all those pieces will be on Vestia Collective this week I've had this Regina Pio dress on my Vestia Collective as well for um, I think this has been on there for over a month now the reason I'm selling it is because I mean I've worn it loads it's an absolutely gorgeous dress but every time I wore it I just felt like it didn't quite suit my shape or my it didn't complement my height it was one of those dresses that I wanted to it to work so badly that I just continued to wear it but every time I kind of caught myself in the mirror or saw myself photographed in it I just felt like it wasn't quite right for me it's got this like panel bit here so this tiered bit here sits almost like slightly below the hips so I think this style would be great on someone who is maybe like five six and over but I'm only 5'3", so this bottom half of the dress always seemed like it was a bit too long for me. It's like this panel here needed to be shorter or slightly lifted up. And the cost to get that done at a tailor would have been astronomical. I just, I always felt like it would have possibly ruined the dress. So I've decided to put that on Vestia Collective and hopefully it will fit someone else slightly better and they will love it more than I did. I had quite a good comment on well I had hundreds of great comments on last week's video thank you all of you I'm getting through them all and responding uh, one by one but someone said it could be interesting to include in the vlog bits when I'm working because I do have a tendency to say oh I've just been working or I've got some work to do and then I don't really 
include that or elaborate on what that is. So I thought maybe this week, because um, I do kind of need to get back into the swing of work things this week, because last week I was quite lazy and kind of gave myself the week off unintentionally. So this week I need to get back into that routine. So there hopefully will be some work things to show within the vlog. Um, it won't be all that interesting. For example, right now I am sat at a very messy desk responding to emails because we've obviously just had a bank holiday and like I just said, I was quite lazy last week. Hold my hands up and admit I was lazy last week. <laughs> um, so there are lots of unread emails and they tend to be just collaboration inquiries, gifting inquiries, um, people just reaching out. I've had quite a few emails, just people reaching out, especially since watching the vlogs, um, about just various things. Like I've had a few people email me about yoga, a few people email me about, about books. Um, what else has there been? There's been all sorts. So yeah, I'm just working my way through my inbox and getting those things done. And then I also have some content to shoot at some point this week the weather's set to be good all week which is quite good so hopefully I'll be able to get that done really easily because when it's dark or when it's cloudy it's quite hard to shoot in the house anyway I'm rambling and should really get on with these emails I've got 35 unread and I would like that to be at zero by I'm not going to set myself a time but today I would like to get that to zero Hello, I'm currently trying to take some photos for a job that I've got with this really nice accessories brand called Heru. I never know how to pronounce it, but I've been a massive fan of theirs for quite a while. They're a Spanish brand that do beautiful leather handbags and very nice shoes. Some of you who have followed me on Instagram for a while well, no, I've been quite a supporter of the brand. I'm obsessed with their bags and have a couple of pairs of their espadrilles. Anyway, the reason I'm talking to you is because I thought it'd be quite funny to show you my shooting setup because I'm shooting solo at the moment and I'm using a tripod and a Bluetooth remote connected to my phone and it just looks really funny. So this is the setup. I've got my tripod set up here with this um, like clip thing that I put my phone in. Then I've got a mirror behind this setup because here is the spot that I'm going to stand and shoot in. But when I'm stood in this spot, I can't really tell what I look like. And that's my biggest struggle when shooting solo is that I can't tell how I look like I, I don't have anyone directing me like oh you're slouching or you know that kind of thing so I put the mirror behind here so I can so when I'm stood in this in the position that I want to be shot at I can see what I look like um, it just looks really funny from behind the scenes and then the plant is there so that I can focus on the plant because that's where I'm going to stand so I'll focus and lock in on the plant and then remove the plant and stand there and hope to god that I'm in focus this is how I do it most of the time when I'm shooting on my own in the house it just looks really funny um so yeah that's what I'm doing this morning and um this clip thing that I've actually got my phone clipped into I think it's making my phone overheat because I'll be using it and then within like 15 minutes my phone is like red hot. I don't know if it's the clip or maybe it's the remote. Hmm. Anyway, um, it's, it's a means to an end at the moment until I, I might replace this. I might get something slightly better. Anyway, I should really carry on. Many of you will be familiar with this mirror. It is the selfie mirror. It's been my selfie taking mirror for the past 
seven years I think I think I've had yeah I've had this mirror for seven years it's from Ikea and it has served me very very well apologies I'm just I've just got out of the shower and I'm just in joggers and a t-shirt anyway today is a very momentous day for this mirror because sadly it's being replaced that's right I've bought a new mirror That's a big mirror, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it looks it looks lovely though. The old one, I thought the old one was quite big. But yeah, you know, to looks... me this is a big mirror. <laughs> yeah. But this <laughs> I worried it was really big, like too big for this space, but actually it's not too bad. You'll probably just find me here for the rest of the evening, just drooling over my new mirror. I cannot believe how big it is. <laughs> I look tiny. Well, I am tiny, I'm only 5'3", but still, this just makes me look even smaller. I love it so much, and I love the curved top. I think this room really needed some curved shapes. We've got so many squares and rectangles and straight lines in here, so the curved edge really complements the room quite nicely. I feel like I need to apologise for my appearance throughout all of that. I got out of the shower and was like, right, I just want to film the mirror quickly while it's still daylight. So I've just got some shrunken jogging bottoms on, uh, a manky t-shirt and some flip-flops and wet hair. Don't know what to do with this one now though. Feels like the end of an era. Bye. Putting this mirror in here now really spurs me on to get the rest of this room sorted. This is our bedroom, by the way, if you couldn't tell. And we just haven't really given it much attention. It's been kind of, the upstairs hasn't really been a focus for us. We've kind of focused on the downstairs for so long and now we're focusing on the garden. But now I really wanna get this room looking just a little bit nicer. I mean, it's, there's some lovely things in here, like we've got really nice Tekla bed linen. We've obviously got the mirror. We've got a very nice Frama shelf, we've got some lovely pendants, like we've got nice components in here but it just needs dressing a bit better. Like this sideboard was made by our friend who is a carpenter, furniture maker, I don't know, it's, yeah I guess you'd call him a carpenter. And it's beautiful, a a absolutely stunning, I love it. But I haven't dressed it because I just haven't really felt like I wanted to give it the TLC just yet. Don't know why, because this could look beautiful, like could properly dress the top of it with some really nice things, get this filled properly, but instead it just houses rubbish like this. Like, what is this? Just stuff that's just not, like, it's just messy. So maybe next week I'll try and get this room looking a little bit, just a little bit nicer, you know, just give it a little bit of attention maybe. Whew, I just did the most gruelling hit and abs workout. It was only 30 minutes but boy I was sweating so much after that. It was one of the Cycle London ones, it was on their IGTV on Instagram. That was really good. That's the first bit of exercise I've done this week. It's funny how the body can one week just have so much energy and drive to exercise and then the next week it's just like nope not today and that's been me this week last week I ran five days out of seven this week I have ran zero days and we are at Wednesday I don't know why I just had to check then what day we we're at <laughs> so we're almost halfway through the week and I haven't been for a run yet because I just haven't haven't had that energy to do it but I think tomorrow I'll give it a go this evening I am about to catch up with the girls on the Zoom and we're going to play Scattergories and I'm really excited because 
I only discovered what Scattergories was about maybe three or four weeks ago when Lizzie suggested that we play it via Zoom. And I've been hooked ever since. I think it's so fun and it's a really fun way to like engage your brain and get your brain thinking. Especially like today, I haven't really engaged my brain much. So it's quite a fun way to just think outside the box and just think about things. And obviously looking forward to catching up with the girls. Dean's gone out this evening, which means I get to cook whatever I want for dinner. You know, like when you're on your own, you can just cook whatever you want and there's no judgment. That's me this evening. I think I'm going to cook. I say cook, like there's no cooking involved with this, but I'm going to make a cheese and tomato toasted sandwich and then probably watch Gossip Girl for the rest of the evening. This has been quite possibly my favourite snack during lockdown. The reason I made two, by the way, is because the loaf of bread lacked height. So it was actually a tiny little loaf, so I've made two to make up for it. Inside is mozzarella, just sliced up mozzarella, sliced up tomato, basil and some salt and pepper. That is it. And it is delicious. I don't think you can beat the flavour combination that is mozzarella, tomato and basil. It is just incredible. And the smell, the smell of fresh basil, like, makes me salivate sometimes. And, oh, yeah, I'm just going to dig in and stop talking. We're on another garden centre mission this morning. Dean um, isn't working today, so I've taken the opportunity to use him as my chauffeur and take me to a couple of garden centres because I can't drive. <laughs> and then this afternoon, I think I'm going to just have a little afternoon of gardening and just filling some of the other spaces that um, are still left to fill in the garden. But, yeah, what day are we on now? Thursday. Gosh, how time flies. Right, I'm having a bit of a garden, well, a bit of a flower rejig because I wasn't 100% happy with the formation of all of the flowers and plants. And now that we've bought some more, I felt like while they were still in that first phase of, um, what do you call it? Is it bedding in? I should move them around now while I've still got the chance. I just wanted to add some more bushier things, some slightly taller things. So I've added in some grass and a few other sort of taller shrubs further down. Just because I was a bit worried that having such delicate flowers was just going to look a bit bitty, whereas I want something that eventually will get quite bushy. Um, but yeah, I guess just I just wasn't 100% happy with how it looked. And if you are watching in horror at me doing this in white dungarees, these are my gardening overalls, so it's okay. I fully intend for these to get dirty.
I've just been sat in the garden enjoying a glass of wine. I think I've got mud on my face from gardening. <laughs> yeah, I've just been sat in the garden drinking a glass of wine, reading, enjoying the last of the sun, and then got a message from Lizzie to say that the government were doing a live lockdown review announcement. So I like quickly scrambled myself together and turned the TV on. There wasn't anything massive that we didn't already know was coming. We already knew that shops were due to open in the next two to three weeks and we already knew that schools were going back in sort of like the next two to three weeks as well. But the biggest thing has been that they have now announced we can gather in groups of up to six people and we can now gather in people's gardens as opposed to how it was before where we could only meet up with one other person and we could only really meet them in like a public space so like a park or a meadow we couldn't go into other people's houses or gardens so I feel really uplifted now knowing that we can go and sit in friends gardens and it's okay to do that like I'm already thinking I can now go and sit in my dad's garden and see him for a bit we can go and see Dean's family sit in their garden see them for a bit and vice versa and it's okay to do that I just I'm just like this is amazing it feels like it's funny because it's such a small thing that you would have taken for granted before all of this happened but with the length of time that has passed since we have been able to do that I am just so grateful with any social interaction that I'm allowed to have at the moment and if that is someone sat in my garden two meters away from me just waving at me I'm just like I'll take it like I cannot wait to have people sat in our garden and to go and see our friends and sit in their garden funnily enough I had a phone call just before I started filming this from the courier who is delivering our garden furniture to say that they're delivering it tomorrow and I feel like that could not be any more perfectly timed ready for Monday's new lockdown guidelines I'm just like great we're gonna have the table and chairs we've got all the plants planted now it's just going to be lovely so yeah if you can't tell by my rather elated mood I am really pleased with that announcement I know we've still got a long way to go they did say that there's still on average like 55 was it 50 I think it was 54,000 cases a week in the UK which still like that's that's a ludicrous amount it's, that sounds horrible and that sounds so scary but I know that is lower than it has been and it is getting lower um, and obviously we'll still be very cautious and still be washing hands and sanitizing and wearing masks and all that kind of thing but to just be able to have that social interaction with people that I haven't seen for so long really really looking forward to that I am on cooking duty this evening and I think I've mentioned a few times that I'm not hugely into cooking. I, it's not something I massively enjoy. So Dean tends to be the main cook in the house. I'd say he cooks six days out of seven. Sometimes he will cook every evening. He doesn't mind though. I, I've said before, he just listens to a podcast and he just gets in the zone. But the general rule is if one of us wants to try a new recipe we have to be the one to cook it and I recently bought a new cookbook and there's quite a few recipes in it that I really want to try so I've kind of uh, volunteered myself to do a lot of cooking over the next few days it's this book from Anna Jones the modern cooks year this has been out for a couple of years and it's been quite a popular one I keep seeing it pop up on Instagram so I decided to finally buy it after years of solely relying on Jamie Oliver and the Hemsley sisters. They tend to be the two books that we alternate between, sort of like the 30 Minute Meals book and the, um, the Hemsley sisters did a second book, which is really good. But then Melissa Hemsley also did her own book, which was also really good, that we tend to cook from quite a lot. So I felt like I just needed a new cookbook to sort of give us something new to try because we kind of get in a rut with cooking and tend to repeat the same recipes week in week out so this is a vegetarian book well it says over 250 vibrant vegetable recipes I thought this would be quite handy in my quest to becoming 100% vegetarian I'd say I am probably at about 85% at the moment as you saw last week 
fried chicken seems to be my absolute downfall along with roast dinners they're the two things that i'm really struggling to give up but i have every hope that within sort of like the next month or so i'll be completely 100 percent vegetarian um anyway so the recipe i've picked from this book by the way this the photography within this book is beautiful like it's a very nice it's a very visually pleasing book to flick through as well the recipe I've picked is sweet potato and green chilli masala dosa. I'm hoping that this won't take any longer than an hour. An hour is kind of like my cooking threshold. Um, I feel like an hour was like, even that's a bit too long, but I really, really want to try this. So I'm fully dedicated to the cause. Dean's out at the moment, so I can like fully read the recipe, di just digest this and do this all on my own. And then hopefully when he gets back, there will be a delicious masala dosa ready to eat. Fingers crossed if this all goes to plan. This is the aftermath of me cooking and I think perfectly illustrates why I dislike cooking so much. However, I'm quite pleased with myself. This looks like it has the potential to be very tasty. So this is a sweet potato and pea mixture with spices, cumin, some green chilies, some other stuff. Then some homemade Indian flatbreads and then yogurt, mango chutney and some lime and coriander to put on top. Are you excited to eat a meal that's been cooked by me? It's a rare occasion. <laughs> it's a rare occasion. Is that why you've got a glass of wine? You never have a glass of wine. <laughs> I've literally just woken up so excuse my puffy sleepy appearance i am still in pajamas and was about to go was about to get ready to go for a run until our table and chairs got delivered this morning they came like first thing and with no pre-warning hence why i'm still in my pajamas and all like sleepy eyed we're just going to quickly set it up in the garden before dean heads off to work and then i will go for a run We currently only have two chairs because I ordered them on the website. I ordered them through Connox because they had the fastest lead time. However, they didn't have enough chairs in stock to fulfill my full order. So I ordered two chairs from them and the table. And then I've ordered two other chairs from a different website that have a slightly longer lead time. So for now, we've just got two chairs. And I think I'm might order another two to make it six depending on how this looks once it's all set up i'd also like a parasol but you know baby steps at least we've got a table and two chairs so we can sit outside and eat dinner this weekend Just in case I butcher the name, it's um, this brand, Skagarak. Skagarak? I think it's Skagarak. Skagarak, yeah. And if I didn't say it already, we ordered it from Connox, and then the two additional chairs that are on their way, we ordered from Utility Design, but their lead time is just slightly longer than Connox. Connox got this to us in... Week and a half? Yeah. Mm, yeah, maybe like seven days, which is pretty good. They obviously had it in stock already, ready to go, because most other websites were saying that this was a made-to-order item, and it was a four to six week lead time. So yeah, potentially we'll be shopping for a parasol next. That looks nice. Does it? And then two chairs this side, and once those two chairs arrive, I'll see how that looks. Six chairs might seem a bit excessive. I don't even know when we'll have that many people round. 
<laughs> you know, we normally only ever have like two other people. Oh, that does look lovely, doesn't it? When we've got our decking, <laughs> when this is all decked. Yeah, once this area is decked. So this can be our little lounging area. I mean, obviously with all the rubbish, it looks terrible. And then once the fence is finished. Which I'll do on the weekend. Oh, it's, it's coming together, isn't it? Slowly yeah. but surely coming together. Right, I need to try and contain my excitement at the prospect of eating outside this evening and just get ready and go out for a run. Actually, maybe if I channel this excitement into the run, I'll have quite a successful run. I'm just going to find somewhere to prop you up while I just put some moisturiser on. There we go, I've stacked a shoe box on top of another box. Um, right, SPF. Where is my SPF? Here it is. I'm using, and I have used for a very, very long time, as my kind of daily SPF, is the Beauty Pie Ultralight UVA UVB SPF 25. It's very, very good. I like the texture of this a lot, but I'd be interested to try some other ones. The reason I like this one so much is because it's got hyaluronic acid in it, so it feels really hydrating and has quite glowy properties to it. I'm not sure what kind of run I'm going to do this morning. I don't know whether I'll do a headspace one. I might do, although I have added some new songs to my running playlist, so maybe I'll do that. I received so many messages from you all saying that you'd tried the headspace runs or you were using the headspace running guided runs already and how much you were loving them. And I actually received an amazing message from someone who said that they've been using the Headspace runs. Oh, this is just a nourishing eye cream from Verso, by the way. My eyes are very dry at the moment, thanks to hay fever. Yes, yeah, so someone messaged me saying that they've been doing the Headspace guided runs. And when they first discovered the Headspace guided runs, they actually felt quite emotional afterwards. and. It's funny that this person said that because I actually cried the first time I did one of the runs. Sorry, my camera just completely cut out on me, like mid-sentence. What was I saying? Completely lost my train of thought. Yes, I was saying that after I had finished my first ever Headspace run, I cried and I didn't, I couldn't work out why I was crying. I couldn't work out whether it was a happy or sad cry. And I think sometimes what happens with me is I get such a rush of endorphins and I got such a rush of endorphins after that run and it was such a positive experience that I didn't quite know what to do with that feeling so it the kind of most appropriate thing felt like to just cry just let it out with a cry so I think well it that was a happy cry it was just a running experience that I hadn't felt before and it was quite powerful in a, in the way it made me feel and the way it made me think and my natural instinct was to just cry. So if you get emotional with things like that, where something feels quite profound or something all of a sudden like flicks a, a light switch on in your head or something like that, it'd be interesting to see if other people get quite emotional with stuff like that. And it's not necessarily about the exercise, I don't think, it was just the experience as a whole just felt so overwhelmingly positive and changing for me and powerful I got emotional and I actually remember the first time I think when I was training for the marathon and I think I did my first sort of like I think it was like a 25 kilometer run and it was the furthest ever ran in my life and I just got so emotional and I was like I can't believe I've just done that I cannot believe I have found whatever I needed within me to run that far and I I think I cried after that, I, but sometimes when, like I said, sometimes when endorphins get so intense for me, I do get emotional because I don't know how to quite like, almost like control them or use them or harness them in a way. Anyway, I need to get out there. The weather is glorious. I'm feeling quite positive and I just need to harness all of this and use it in a run. Okay, definitely need a parasol if I've got any chance of being able to sit up there 
and work at the same time because let's face it, you cannot see your phone screen or your laptop while sat in the sun. It's just not, no matter where you angle yourself, you can't, you can't see it. So yes, I will be looking for a parasol at some point this evening, but that was lovely to be able to just sit out there and just sit at a table and chairs and eat my lunch and enjoy a bit of sun. Um, oh, got the recycling on the stairs there. Um, right, I've got loads of tidying to do. I've got quite a few emails to get through and I need to go to the post office to do the last load of Depop posting. I know I said I wasn't gonna do another Depop drop, but I've had quite a few messages and I feel like People have managed to twist my arm a little bit and I'm going to do a, another Depop drop this Sunday. It won't be very big because there isn't much left. It really bugs me that because of the blue filter in my glasses, whenever I try and film in my glasses, you just get that. Anyway, as I was saying, it won't be a big drop just because there isn't much left for me to put on Depop, but there will be a drop nonetheless. I don't know why I'm calling it a drop as if like I'm dropping some like real sort of like hype beast clothing or something. There will be an upload on Depop at some point on Sunday, probably roughly between seven and eight again. So yes, there will be a few more items uploaded and then I think that's it. I think I'm done. I've cleaned out every uh, corner of my wardrobe and that loft as I can. So <laughs> you've, you've had your lot, I'm afraid. I told you these would get filthy. I've got mud, I've got garden fence paint, I've got it on my hands, I've probably got it in my hair. I feel like these parts where I begin to sign off the vlog have almost become a bit of a self-reflection tool for me because I put the vlog together and then I film this bit at the very end on the Sunday and then tag it on on the end and then upload it. So I get the chance to watch the entire vlog and kind of relive the ups and downs of the week and it really jogs my memory as to how I've been feeling emotionally. So in that sense, it's this really good tool of self-reflection. And then I do this bit. And I don't know about you, but this week has really felt like a tale of two halves. We had the first half of the week where there was a lot of anticipation surrounding what was going to happen in terms of easing lockdown. And there was still a lot of controversy. Bleh, there was still a lot of con controversy surrounding Dominic Cummings and, and all of that. Then there was the second half of the week where we just saw this incredible explosive reaction both online and offline as to what has been happening in Minnesota. And it's been absolutely incredible to see within, I guess, the community that I have online and the people that I follow, how many people are just shouting from the rooftops and just trying to educate people and create awareness around anti-racism, basically. It's phenomenal. And the reason I didn't vlog yesterday was because, I mean, you'll see, there's a tiny little bit that I did and that was just eat, us eating dinner at the end of the day. But apart from that, I didn't film anything because I had just spent the whole day consuming what I was seeing online and just basically just drinking it all in and saving lots of resources, podcasts, uh, new accounts, books to read, TV shows to watch. I mean, I was just taking it all in making notes, saving things, and just bringing together a set of tools for me to start working on my anti-racism, I guess. And within all this, I found Nova Reed, and I found her podcast called Conversations with Nova Reed. And the reason I want to talk about this specific episode of the podcast that I listen to is because it there was points in the podcast that applied so well to both the first half and the second half of the week. And I'll talk about the first half of the week first. Something that I'm very wary of is that at the beginning of each week, I, when I start a vlog, I think about things that I can do to make that vlog interesting. 
and I try and think of tasks I can set myself that people will enjoy watching, that will make my week seem quite varied, that will create a good vlog essentially. In Within this podcast, Nova, so the, the I'll leave all of the notes below so you can listen to this if you like. The episode was called Allyship and the Power and Pain of Unlearn Unlearning Racism with Selena Barker. I've had to write this down because um, just I loved some of the things that I heard and I just wanted to make sure I had them written down so that I can keep looking at them. And when, in conversation with Selena Barker, Nova was talking on the topic of coronavirus and what the situation is bringing up for her and for us as a whole. And for Nova, she says that the circumstances are reinforcing she is where she needs to be, which I think is lovely. And in response, Selena metaphorically says it feels like the planet is burnt out and telling us to stop, rest and pause. And then she goes on to say how it's interesting to see, to, well, to watch people who are resisting the call to do that. And I feel like that's how I am when I start a vlog each week. I'm resisting the call to show you what my true reaction to what is happening is. Does that make sense? So my true reaction has been to slow down and take in what is around me. I always worry that I'm showing what might seem like really, really everyday, boring, mundane things like cooking, eating, gardening, like, do you know what I mean? Like just those really, really small things. However, this is my reaction to all of this. My reaction has been to slow down, be calmer, stiller, and just simplify my life a little bit. And I think I just need to own that, you know, and just own that that is my reaction to this. If my vlogs are very similar each week, that's just my reaction to the things that are going on. Okay, just some food for thought for anyone who's maybe getting quite in their head about being productive and feeling like they need to do lots of things during this time, when actually I think it would be quite nice to look back on this time and realise that you slowed down. But anyway, there's so much more to that podcast episode than just that little bit. There is, I mean, it's about an hour long and it's a very raw conversation, but at the same time, it's also quite gentle in that it doesn't necessarily make your head ache. It is really, really interesting to hear a white woman talk about how she has done the anti-racism work and how difficult it was for her. It's just, it's, an awesome conversation and I think it's a really good place to start if you yourself are feeling like you would like to start the anti-racism work as well. So as I said I'll leave that below and I'll leave any other things that I found that I found really interesting and really helpful over the past couple of days and I think I'll leave it there. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you all next week.